Okay, this is a uh, Australopithecus blocki. It's the largest ape ever discovered. And uh, he's a big boy. I'm standing here as a reference point. If he reared up on his back legs, he would be, oh, 11 foot tall. Uh, he easily, his mass is uh, 1,100 pounds. Uh, and a lot of people think this is uh, what passed as Bigfoot. That a few of these survived. And uh, let's go through the eight man sightings around the world. So, virtually all cultures have a, a boogeyman, a big hairy guy that grabs children. It's, it's used as an archetype to keep kids in line. And, and there might have been a couple of apes that made it on the Asian continent anyway. Maybe not up in the Himalayas. Those have all been uh, misidentified as the uh, as bears. Even the scalps that they found at the uh, llama series that they said were yetis uh, uh, weren't. They were, they were, DNA was uh, linked them to uh, the bears up there. Uh, that roam in the, in the range and uh, got a little little tidbit here so if you're from San Antonio you know about Southwest Research Center which has been renamed to Texas Research Center was founded by a man named Tom Slick well Tom Slick searched for the Yeti and uh, but he was actually a front for the CIA they were getting the intel from Tibet on uh, the communist Chinese and he, he, you know, ballyhooed a lot about looking for the, the Yeti, the abominable snowman, when actually he was actually running spy, a spy network for the government in, in uh, Tibet, uh, which is no longer an autonomous region that got, it got absorbed by China. But anyway, uh, back to what I really wanted to get into. So this is, uh, we're on the eve of, uh, Oh, Samhain, Halloween, it's a big satanic holiday. Uh, I'm going to take this in a way you probably weren't expecting it, but uh, there's a man named Pilates that has written several books called Missing 411, several follow-ups. It's about all the people that go missing at national parks. Now, if you think about it, uh, and, and specifically uh, younger children, and if you think about it, uh, a national park is a perfect place to abduct somebody. There's no cell phone coverage. Uh, when people disappear, it's just thought that they're off wandering around somewhere. And by the time you actually find the, realize that you can't find them, you look for an hour on your own. It's it's a standard practice people do. They'll, they'll frantically search before they try to contact a, a park ranger. Well, the park ranger. Generally, by the time that happens, they can't do anything that day, so they get the search together for the next day. So uh, there's a shocking number of amount of people that have gone missing in national parks over the years. And you can't even find out about it through the Freedom of Information Act because they leave the cases open. In an ongoing investigation, you can't get Freedom of Information Acts about. But the funny thing about... Some of the you know, and some of the bodies are found, you know, like a, a twelve-year-old kid is found two mountain ranges over and two thousand feet high, and he's dead. But sometimes they find the five, six, four, five, and six, seven-year-old, and they all tell the same story about a strange, big, hairy, talking dog that kept him warm overnight. Uh, it's my contention. There's a major satanic group called the Cathedral of the Werewolves, and they, uh, well, not only that, all, all satanic groups have a, a wolf being that they dress up as when they're doing their little coven uh, activities. Uh, but I believe that specifically the thing called the Cathedral of the Werewolves, they're, a, uh, uh, they're Satan worshipers. Anyway, uh, if you look at uh, the old... Uh, uniforms that, that in in 
Europe where they celebrate the Krampus, the Dark Claws. It looks kind of like that, but most covens, if they're wealthy and uh, old-lined, uh, or if they are, like I said, the, ten the Cathedral of the Werewolves, they will have this costume that looks like a giant dog. It looks like a werewolf, actually, but if you're a little kid and a guy's wearing a something that looks a bit like this, but it's actually got a dog head on it, you would think it's a talking dog, and, and henceforth, they, that's why only the five and six year olds, the sometimes they take pity on them after they use them for you know whatever they're using them for, and usually it's a sacrifice, but sometimes it's for sex or whatever. And uh, but they'll let the little bitty ones go every once in a while because uh, just for whatever whatever reason, and because uh, they don't think they can uh, their story will be credible. Uh, anyway, check out the works of uh, Pallades. He's written, the first book was Missing 411, and then he wrote uh, three follow-up books to it. Now, he comes to a different conclusion. Uh, he thinks Bigfoot's a real creature, uh, and he doesn't say that in any of those books, but if you go to his website, you figure out that's what he's, he actually thinks. Uh, I think it's a it's a front for devil worshippers, and if you go to the FBI website, several hundred thousand people go missing every year. Now, some of those people fall into crevasses, and some are eaten by animals, and some just want to disappear. But anyway, I think a good a good portion go to the the cults here. Thank you. I'm out.